Train the muscles, not the joints. So welcome back to Natural Glam Bodybuilding. And today I just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, something that I've been uh, talking about the whole time through all the videos and everything. But it's important for me to kind of make a video just on this subject specifically. And what this subject is, is, is there a right way to do an exercise? You know, is there such thing? You know, because a lot of people are arguing on the internet about how you should do bench press, squat, deadlift, like all these types of things. And they're comparing one person the way they're doing exercise compared to the other. And the only caveat, if that's the right word, you know, that, that I would put, the only, the only thing that I would say that dictates whether an exercise is right or wrong, the main thing is, is it injuring you or not? Okay, is the exercise injuring you or not? That is the only thing that is of supreme importance, okay? So that said, then you can cater the exercise or change the exercise range of motion or the weight or the intensity or the rest in between set, you know, all, all these types of different parameters that you can change in an exercise. You can change these things based on the goal that you want to achieve. And the only way to learn is to experiment is to find out, you know, is to change your range of motion or change your weight or to change the angle of attack or to change where your shoulders are sitting. Like I met a guy in the gym the other day and he was bench pressing and he said for the last 10 years he just can't bench press because he had in his mind a very strict idea of how you're supposed to bench press. He had his arms wide apart and he was coming down really wide and he was keeping his elbows flared because he wanted to hit his chest and for some reason he learned how to do the bench press in this way. But the problem was, every time he came down, he would jam his AC joint, he would jam his rotator cuff, and his shoulders would kill him every time he bench pressed. And he thought, hey, I'm just injured, uh, I guess I just can't bench press, that's, that's the problem, bench presses are a problem for me. Well, within 30 seconds, I took this guy from a guy that couldn't bench press to a guy that can bench press with absolutely no pain just by making a couple subtle tweaks. And he was still touching his chest, just so you know. It's not like I just made his range of motion short, but I made sure he pulled the shoulder blades back, pulled the shoulders down, elbows in slightly, and then pushing, kind of like bending the bar like a U, right? I just got him to do that, and instantaneously, shoulder pain gone. Now, if I would have walked on water in front of this guy, I probably would have got the same reaction as when he jumped off that bench and said, holy shit, I can't believe it. Like, he said, it's been over 10 years. And this guy was a medical professional, okay? It's not like this was just some average guy walking off the street that didn't know anything about anatomy or anything, okay? So the fact is, is that, you know, this really goes to show that there is no right and wrong. There can be formally trained people with PhDs in exercise physiology or kinesiology or any of this kind of stuff, but they still may have minor variations that will be different in how they have to push or how they have to train compared to somebody else. So being open really is important. I always talk about that as well, and, and this is the reason, because Sometimes you will have a very firm idea of how an exercise should be performed, but what if that idea is meant for somebody else? What if that's not the idea that applies to you, right? The other thing to really consider is that when you are performing an exercise a certain way, you are creating a certain effect. Like my brother and I, I you know, most of you guys don't have the benefit of having a twin brother with the same genes, okay? Same DNA and all this. The bottom line is him and I would perform two exercises and, and or the same exercise differently, right? We would perform different variations of it, and then we'd see how each other's bodies would develop differently. So of course, at first you decide how to perform an exercise based on comfort, you know? What really is working for you? What feels natural for you? And from there, there were some different preferences based on injury history, based on sports, based on coordination, all this kind of stuff. So my brother would move slightly different than I would, and he would choose the exercise differently than I would, and we'd get different types of results, right? So my hamstrings got better developed than his, but his uh, quadriceps got better developed than mine, you know, by the way he was squatting and front squatting and the stuff that he could actually do. So through examining these different variables, I start to realize, well, wait a second. Sometimes the very same exercise is just being performed differently, but does it mean it's wrong? No, it just means it will create a different effect in the body. And this will be different from one person to the next. One guy can squat a certain way and get huge hamstring development. Another guy can squat the same way and get more quadricep development, right? So it's about changing these parameters for you. It's about adjusting the variables as you go along. And the only way you can do so is to not get locked into only one way to do something, right? I know it used to drive me nuts when I was like 16 years old. I was like, oh, high bar squat or low bar squat. What's the best way to do it? If I don't do it the best way, I'm gonna lose all these results and my bodybuilding is just gonna go down the tubes, you know? And this type of thinking is actually limited, but it's the way a lot of people start. And the fact is, is that high bar squat or low bar squat, it just depends on where you're feeling it. And it depends on whether you're getting results with it. There's really no right way. 
But one thing I will tell you just from my own experience, low bar squat will take some of the strain off the lower back and transfer more of it to the legs, right? Because, you know, the weight is closer to, you know, the pivot point, right? So if the weight's closer to the pivot point, it's just, it's easier. So you're not you're wasting so much energy on lower back lifting the weight, and now your legs are the ones that are hitting failure. So that's why low back squat was one of my favorite squats for a long time. Even though I wasn't getting deep, I was getting total failure in the legs from it, and I was building some pretty good legs from that, right? So the bottom line is, just be open, play around you know just play around with the exercises find out what works what feels right what hurts your joints what doesn't hurt your joints what really puts the stress on the muscle what puts the stress on the joints and just play with this be open and you will get a lot more results and also it'll make your workouts a lot more fun right so i hope this helps you in your training make sure you visit me at naturalglantbodybuilding.com and i'm going to have a two-day split training program up on my website within the next day or so so check that out and take care for now